Hello, I'm Hydron, Hydron Famla from the Baltic Environmental Forum, and I work in the field of the environment since more than 30 years. The Baltic Environmental Forum is a small NGO with offices in the Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and in Hamburg. We do work a lot on issues of everyday consumption and lifestyle, on water quality and hazardous substances, and how substances come into the water. And this is why I am invited to give you a lecture about hazardous substances in our daily lives, toys, cosmetics, household wear, textiles, all what is around us everywhere, every day. Hazardous substances in our daily life, I think you immediately think about poisoning issues, about something smelling, something explosive. No. I'm talking about everyday goods, about materials that are not only in cosmetics and body care or in cleaning agents, detergents, but also in any plastic uh, good, in furniture, in flooring material, in the cloth you wear and in the toys your kids play with. They are part of our life without us being fully aware of it. And I'm pretty sure you will have some surprises from what I'm telling you. Which substances we talk about, just to make it clear. We talk about phthalates. These are softeners. You find them in flip-flop shoes, in shower curtains, in the floor you walk on, and in toys kids play with. We always say we walk on phthalates, on the floors, and in phthalates with the flip-flop shoes. They are everywhere. We talk about bisphenol A or bisphenol S and F and other bisphenols, which are stabilizers. They are in one-way dishes. They are inner coatings of food cans, um, in glues. Then we talk about brominated flame retardants that uh, delays plastic fire and flame formation. You have them on electronic devices, on plush toys, you know, soft toys, these teddy bears, um, on mattresses, which are on your beds, um, on furniture, on soft furniture, your sofa, on curtains, everywhere. Also on, on, on office furniture, for example. Anything that should not uh, get fire. The theater is also a very good example. It's everywhere. Then we are talking about uh, per and polyfluorinated chemicals, PFCs. These are making surfaces water repellent or oil repellent or dirt repellent. They are the non-stick coatings on pans. They are oil repellent food packaging, um, many, 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 many sources um, uh, on your raincoats or such things. Um, hazardous substances are not only part uh, of the products you buy and use. Um, they are fulfilling a certain function in these products. Uh, and uh, these are synth synthetic man-made chemicals. And we mainly have them as additives to the materials your original food is made of. And you may not believe it, in some cases, the additives are actually much more in volume than the original material of a product itself, especially when we talk about plastics. But it's not only about additives in the product. Um, the hazardous substances occur in our life also as uh, residues from production processes. Um, they are used as auxiliaries. They are used as uh, catching fluids, as cleaning agents, as uh, process chemicals, especially in the textile uh, um, production. And they stay on the product and they also go into the wastewater, of course, directly. And then we do have also chemicals that are newly created during production process. We call them unintended added substances. I have one example for you. A plastic you think is 
just something solid and good. Plastic has many, many, many additives. Plastic is a unique material. Uh, when it has been invented, it became very, very quickly the new material because it is formable, it is stiff, it is soft, it has a lot of functions. It's a super material, but there are hazardous substances, chemicals, additives to the plastic that make this function. So plastic is simply uh, a polymer, a phenolic, a phenolic polymer from the, uh, from the oil. Uh, but it needs a lot of softeners. They are called phthalates, but also stabilizers, including bisphenol A. You need antioxidants. You need uh, ultraviolet filter protection agents. You need a lot of dyes and dye stabilizers to make the colors of the plastic really nice and and uh, so that everybody likes it and sees it and you need also stabilizers for making the colors even more nice and of course it contains a lot of frame retards because it should not uh, become it should not burn hazardous substances are emitting or evaporating from these products and articles which i was shortly talking about and they are entering the wastewater system and they are entering into the water system, the piped system, the surface water system, and at the end, the groundwater or the Baltic Sea. And they also pollute our indoor air uh, in our rooms, and they are getting into our bodies by that. For example, when we are eating uh, hot, fatty or acid foodstuff, uh, is, um, so to say, melting uh, certain substances out of the packaging or the container which they are in or you are cooking with, uh, and they go into our body from the eating because it migrates into the food. Um, then uh, these additives or hazardous substances, which are in any kind of textile that gets into direct contact to our skin, moves directly into our skin. And this is a special issue for uh, underwear and also sportwear and sports utensils. I think you do not want to know what your swimming suit is made of. Then we are breathing volatile organic compounds emitted from many, many materials, from the floor, from the furniture, the room textile, the electronic equipment at home, in the office, in the recreational indoor centers, at the daycare, the kids, the schools, whatsoever. And our target substances, which I named already, they can harm the nature and the human health. And they are also accumulating in our environment and bodies. And therefore, a whole cocktail of substances are in our body. This is already answering one of the most frequent questions which we are getting from our lectures. Why is it allowed? Because one product, one article in which a substance is, does not kill you and does not harm your health, but it's the accumulation, the amounts that are there and the cocktail of substances. And nobody is re responsible for the amounts that you intake, only yourself. The producer is responsible only for his own dish or bathing suit but not for all the cloth you wear. And this is, this is the difficult thing. One problem with most of these substances is they are not effectively removed by wastewater treatment plants. So they are not really uh, taken off by, uh, by, the, by the water treatment system. That's more for nutrients and phosphorus, but not for bisphenols or phthalates or something like that. So they are entering at the end the, the natural environment. 
the key message I want to give you right at the beginning from our project, which has been or which is called non city that's about hazardous substances in our urban life, we say the substances that do not go into the wastewater, they don't have to be removed. So a reduction of consumption of use of products and materials that contain hazardous substances are a far better management measure than to build new and expensive water treatment facilities. And yes, we need the industry to change the making of the substances. They need to have a sustainable tox-free design of products. And we need the governments to make protection rules for our health and the health of the environment. But we cannot wait until the legislation and the industry production becomes tox-free and the econ economy becomes uh, sustainable. So we need to act ourselves. And there is a lot what we can do and with which we also can influence production, the market, and legislation. The demand is shown by what we consume everywhere in the world, not only in rich and advanced societies like Sweden or Germany, everywhere in developing countries, in countries with a lower uh, GDP, um, in countries with different production, no matter if Russia or Belarus and their production or European Union production, the substances are everywhere and they can be consumed or not consumed. And I would like to raise a little bit your awareness uh, about which articles, which products, which goods and materials we talk about in our household. I don't want to frighten you uh, and I don't want to tell you that you do mistakes in consumption. We all do them because the products are everywhere. In the last 50 years, this is the developed standard production. But we can be aware of it and we can do slow changes and detox our homes. Let's track the, chem the chemicals in our household. I hope you're ready for it. From room to room, we will look at living room, at the kids room, at sleeping room, into the kitchen and the bathroom. In the living room, we have definitely hazardous chemicals, potentially in the walls, in the flooring material, in electronic devices, in furniture and textiles. We do have flame retardants and softeners in the electronics. We have formaldehyde on our sealed floor and our wooden shelves. We have perfluorinated organic substances on our sofa, uh, which makes it water repellent or dirt repellent. And we have definitely softeners, solvents and PVC in all the materials in the furniture um, that is in, in our rooms. In the children's room, we do have often, unfortunately, dangerous substances in toys especially um, old toys before it was restricted in the European Union to have certain substances in the toys, but also if they are bought from countries that do not follow the European Union legislation. And a lot is imported from China to any country of the world. And a lot is imported not by importers, but by people directly buying cheap goods from the internet. This is a new source of how non-regulated products can come into our living rooms. And I would like to warn you, cheap is never good. And you should always check what is in toys for your children and be aware if it's produced in Asia, the environmental standard is not very high. So you should definitely try to avoid that. In the 
children room, all the handicraft utensils very, very often contain hazardous substances. For example, uh, there is chromium in, in uh, or, or lead in, in paints, in colors with which your child is painting. And that's uh, actually not so nice. Uh, the room textiles, uh, the bed linen, uh, the carpets, the cloth uh, are also potentially containing hazardous substances. And of course, the walls, especially if you are painting the walls uh, with the water repellent paints, because uh, it's very comfortable if the child is uh, is uh, drawing on the walls and then you can wash it away but uh, you know the wash away uh, function of the wall that contains also PFOS this is very clear the flooring material is a big issue a big danger especially uh, little kids are crawling all the time on the floor kids are spending much more time on the floor than adults do and so they are immediately breathing it uh, from crawling on the floor, in the dust, in the air, uh, and that you should know that uh, you should watch out the material from which the, the room, the, the, the children room's uh, floor is made. What can I do to protect myself? That's the question that you probably ask yourself. I think it is very, very important to switch off electronic devices and also to remove them from children's room from sleeping. As long as they are getting warm, they evaporate. So also standby mode and having them running for a long time, having them in the, in the electric switch, that's not recommended. You should avoid furniture from the 70s, 80s and 90s, unless it is explicitly said that it's from natural wood and only oiled and not other surface treated, which will not be so easy. So surface treatment has been very, very fashioned in the 70s and 80s and 90s. And this means with the heavy chemicals. You should uh, uh, ventilate uh, your rooms and vacuum them regularly. You should definitely avoid furniture and floor that is glued. So how is the flooring material put on the floor? Very often it is glue and that is uh, PVC containing. You should come, uh, keep the air temperature below 21 degrees Celsius because uh, if it's too hot, then again, substances are, are moving. You should avoid washable or glossary, glossy wallpapers and wall paints. And when buying new material, you should look for the echo labels, the seals, the certificates, and you should ask for the materials. Um, in the European countries, you have echo labels that are um, that are certifying materials like the Nordic Swan, the European Flower, the German Blue Angel. And there is also an app which is called scan for chem uh, with which is linked to the European chemicals legislation. And with it, you can check if substances above certain amounts are in a certain product. This app unfortunately does not work in Russia or Belarus, so, um, but there is a Polish uh, and a Baltic uh, uh, versions um, and an English one, but I think it doesn't work on your markets yet. Protecting our children is probably something very, very um, important. And we would like to advise you uh, to avoid plastic objects, especially greasy, sticky, or unpleasantly smelling toys. And toys produced before 2009 in the European Union and toys anywhere else where, uh, because 2009, the Toys Directive came into force, which uh, obliges the European producers to avoid certain substances. So if you have European toys made after 2009, then some of the heavy um, hazardous substances are not in there. 
you should observe echo labels, for example, play well in Germany, spiel gut. Um, you should look at uh, publications made by consumer protection organizations. Uh, I think the Ecological Union in St. Petersburg is also producing in Russian product information. And uh, you should look at used toys, secondhand toys. In principle, we advise you for toys to buy new material from European markets certified without certain substances, not to buy from non-EU countries, not to buy from Far East, and not to buy secondhand toys. It's the different with the textiles. Here, we advise to buy secondhand because hazardous substances are washed out. So it, secondhand is not secondhand, okay? Now let's walk to the kitchen. Pots and pans, they are often heavily treated uh, with uh, coatings to make them non-sticky. And this coating, especially if you scratch it, goes directly into your food, especially when it's fatty. Food packaging and packaging of any other goods are a big source for hazardous substances getting into your body. Dishes can also be treated uh, uh, with hazardous substances, um, certain paints burned into them or something like that. And also the, the material from what they are made. We do have PFAS materials in the kitchen, as you can see on pans and on in pots. Then we do have aluminium uh, because people like uh, when they are grilling to put the, the food into the aluminium folio, which uh, especially when you have lemon on it, uh, it, it dilutes the hazardous substances and makes them entering the food. Uh, we do have bisphenol A in cans, in, in, in the coatings of the food cans. Uh, and uh, that's uh, an epoxy resin coating to avoid the can to rust, but it contains, it's a big source of bisphenol A. There are famous new materials uh, like the famous bamboo cap, uh, which is uh, meant to be an alternative uh, uh, climate friendly cup but it contains 20% of melamine and melamine is a substance that needs the formaldehyde uh, to perform. So, and the, the category is you shouldn't heat it above 70 degrees. So it's not for hot drinks, for hot coffee, which is hotter than 70 degrees at the moment of filling. It's okay for the cold drinks, but not for the hot drinks. Mineral oils are a part of your pizza cartons and any other food containers made from cardboard. And as darker the cardboard, as more mineral oils and printing ink it contains from the previous uses, uh, be having been a newspaper or something like that. That's all in the cardboard. And it also contains um, fat repellent uh, uh, PFAS um, because pizza is fatty and it gets into this cardboard and the cardboard should, should last until you have reached home. So it's heavily treated. Better eat the pizza in the restaurant on a normal porcelain plate. That's much more healthy. Softeners and glues. Here is a picture of my favorite example, the rice cooking bag. That's the most stupid, sorry, I hope you are not the designer, industrial designed uh, packaging that uh, from the chemicals perspective is, uh, is actually really a risk. Did you know that a rice bag of this rice cooking bag contains of three layers. There are two layers of this plastic fabrics with the holes, so the water, the, it can, the steam can evaporate. And in between is a layer of glue, which sticks the, the two layers together. What is the glue made of? Guess, epoxy resin. That's the source of bisphenol A. 
And what is the characteristic? Bisphenol A moves out of the material if heated above 70 degrees. At what temperature do you boil your rice? My rice boils at 100 degrees. What do we say? Bad luck. Don't use this stuff. And it's not only about rice, it's also about uh, buckwheat gritty or whatever uh, products in the cooking bags. Cooking bags are uh, a product directly from the hell, if I may say so. But of course, the license and the, the, the permit is made for a cooking bag, for one cooking bag, and not for you cooking every day this rice. So what can I do to protect myself uh, from hazardous substances in the kitchen? There are recycling codes that indicate the type of plastic. And uh, we have some recommendations prepared for you. What should you look like? For example, there's the code number 01, it's the PET, or the 02, it's the, the PEHD, or the 3 is the PVC. Um, I will talk more about the codes uh, in a minute, but uh, there is also uh, bisphenol A in the in the ceiling of the um, of the of the cover of a glass jars, and you should definitely choose the blue ones. You should buy glass jars that have the blue PVC free uh, silicone um, insulation. So it's the blue seal lids. You should prefer glass, ceramic, and stainless steel as the containers for your food. And you should buy definitely your food unpacked and, if possible, preferably organically produced without pesticides and herbicides. You should avoid any kind of uh, plastic with the code number three, which is PVC. or styrofoam or tin cans and also not disposable and microwave dishes. This is material that is not really good because the hazardous substances move out of it under certain conditions and the condition is temperature. You should also avoid aluminium and non-stick utensils because they are heavily coated and the aluminium salt is also moving into especially acid products. So don't put a lemon into aluminium folio. I have a little bit out of season example because I took the presentation from my colleague and she has done that in the, in the last Christmas season, but I liked it so much. So I, uh, I, I put it here, maybe you remember at Christmas, uh, this picture. Christmas decorations are full of nasty substances. They are full of softeners. You know, all these um, lights, the Christmas lights, which you can hang where the little lights are in. It's uh, full of phthalates. Um, and when the light is switched on, it gets warm. And guess what happens? The phthalate moves into the room, of course. Uh, it's full of flame retardants. Uh, logically, a Christmas tree should not burn. Mm, it's full of bisphenols and it's full of heavy metals. So um, you should really watch out what you put on your Christmas tree. You should also watch out what candles you use because candles are made from mineral oil, from paraffins and contain sulfur and fragrances. So never ever use candles which are with fragrances. That's the toxic immediately evaporating into your room. You should prefer candles made of stearine and of bee wax. And there is a quality mark, which is called RIL, uh, to avoid um, hazardous substances. I am not so sure if this is international or existing only in German. Um, I took it from the presentation of my colleague, so I must leave that open. General recommendations for your home. Only own and use what you really need. That's the, the biggest recommendation what we can give you. I am very sure you have too much stuff at home. Me too. 
So I'm still sorting and trying to get rid of and not to buy new. Avoid disposable products, especially plastics, but any disposable products. Prefer products with eco labels and natural ingredients. And air and vacuum regularly your rooms. Trust your senses. If something smells strange, you should take action. Avoid any disinfectants. They are also full of, of nasty substances. And decorate your home with plants because plants are filtering pollutants away. So they are really having also an important function in our homes. They are not only beautiful. How can I avoid hazardous chemicals? I can look for the labels. I can study the ingredients list and I can take a decision what I want to take into me or onto me or around me. And labels are helping me. Uh, recycling codes are helping me on the packaging. And uh, there are certain apps in Europe, sorry, uh, in the EU, which are called Code Check or scan for cam or ToxFox. They can be used uh, to understand what products you want to buy a contain of. It needs a bit of training. Maybe you recognize some of the labels here. The first row um, is for cosmetics and cleaning agents. The second row are textile specific textile labels. Textile industry is one of the most dirty industries in the world. It doesn't only use a lot of chemicals, hazardous substances. Uh, it uses a lot of material which is unsustainably produced. 70% of the textile of the cloth we wear and the cloth produced is made of plastics, of synthetic materials. So it's uh, about production, fair production and production in, in poor countries, in, in awful conditions, but it's a lot about chemicals. So this is an industry what really needs to be changed by consumer action as well. So watch out what you buy and check it, ask for information and buy only what you can read is okay on the labels. Other articles, but cosmetics, cleaning agents and cloth textiles do have the labels like the European flower, the German blue angel or the Nordic swan. Now about recycling codes. You know probably PET, polyethylene terephthalate. Terephthalate. This is the recycling code number one. It's harmless as long as it is not heated. I will say that each time. The number two is the HDPE, the high density polyethylene. It's also harmless as long as it is not heated. The LDPE, it's the low density polyethylene. Again, harmless as long as it is not heated. PP, polypropylene, harmless as long as it is not heated. These four are okay if you do not heat them. And heating means also putting them into a microwave, which is allowed. And it is okay from the stability of the product point of view. This is what it is certified for. But the instruction it's safe to put into microwave only tells you that the product doesn't lose its shape when you put it into the microwave. It does not say that the hazardous substances included in it don't evaporate. Watch out. Yeah, this is the same. Don't put PP dishes into dishwasher because the dishwasher also is hot more than 60 degrees. And again, your container, your, your Tupperware will not be crashed from being washed with a 60 degrees or 65. But it gets uh, packed it and it gets tired. And uh, as long as the material gets more tired over time, substances are evaporating. So no microwave for plastic substances, no dishwashing machine to protect yourself from hazardous substances. 
I don't say anything about the stability of the product. Then the code number three, PVC, polyvinyl chloride, very harmful due to many additives such as plasticizers. Do not buy food in these products. And yes, you do find yogurts in this kind of containers. So watch out. Number six, polystyrol. That's the foamed white thing. Everybody loves it. Uh, takeaway uh, dishes are very often in polystyrol to keep them warm. Or you also have coffee cups from polystyrol in some coffee to go. Uh, um, shops, this is an absolute no-go. And do not take your takeaway food. Uh, the ananas curry, the ananas pork curry from your favorite Asia shop, which is fatty, sour, and hot. And then in polystyrol, that goes directly into your body. The code number seven, other plastic, means that it's not one of the other six, it's mixture. And it can contain polycarbonate, which contains BPA, so better hands off. I already talked a little bit about apps which you can use. I'm not sure if this is for you as the audience in Russia or Belarus the case, but for all the others that hear and read this uh, presentation, you can use the code check, the ToxFox, the scan for cam app and get a bit more informed about what is in certain products that you want to buy. I was asked by the organizer to give a task to you. And I want to give you a little task to start detoxing your home. I think you start with an inventory of your wardrobe. So maybe you can check your cloth and the labels on the cloth. What material are your cloth made from? Is it 100% polyester? Is it cotton? Is it wool? Is there any eco label on the cloth in your uh, wardrobe? Maybe you do have some ecologically produced, maybe not. Your task would be to sort your wardrobe, to look what is the quality of the cloth, and then to look at what do you really need and what not. If you buy new cloth, less cloth, better cloth, eco labeled. Second hand is okay. Try this out for this summer and do not buy if you don't need. That's the best hazardous substance reduction you can do. Remember, cloths are textile industry. It's one of the most heavy polluting uh, industry in the chemicals, using the chemicals, uh, hazardous chemicals. So I think that's something we really should take uh, care of. And the other task I would like to give to you is please make an inventory of food packaging material in your fridge. Not in your whole kitchen, but let's start with the fridge. How is the food in your fridge packed? Check all packaging for cheese, dairy, soya milk, whatsoever, alternative milk products, vegetables, fruits, convenience food, whatsoever, meat. Is anything in self gluing plastic packs? Any polystyrol in line under the meat products? What's the plastic codes on the yogurt containers? Check it and look at where could be potential hazardous substances. And I have a task for you. Take your own containers when you go shopping next time, go on the marketplace, the farmer's marketplace, and try out what you can get without any packaging. No packaging is the best packaging. There can be nothing in. You don't produce waste. You don't have hazardous substances. It is possible. It takes some time to get used, but I think you could try it out for three months and check how much food packaging you reduced and what type of food packaging you reduced. And then you can also calculate or think about how much you reduce the risk of hazardous substances in food packaging. You can buy a big piece of cheese instead of ready prepared slices, which are in packaging where between each slice is an additional plastic layer, which are in plastic um, boxes, uh, which you can open and put back because they are sticky. The sticky thing that closes the cheese box again is epoxy resin, bisphenol A better not to use. So try out to buy 
alternatively on marketplaces from direct producers, local sources, without packaging, take your own containers, equip your kitchen with glass ceramic metal boxes or glass jars and fill your food into them. It will make the food quality better and it will detox your kitchen. This would be first start from my side for you. And then I would like to say um, we have a new project. Uh, I mean, we got on Monday the information that we are winning a live project. It's the chemicals ambassador swarm out to Europe. We have told you last year already of about our chemical ambassador program. So we will do it for many countries in Europe, uh, in the European Union only. Um, and it will start on 1st of October. We are in the grant agreement preparation phase, so we don't have it yet, but we are about uh, to get it. Coalition Clean Baltic is associated organization. So I hope that Mihail, Camille and uh, all the team uh, will uh, make you participating in it by communicating. There will be training to become a chemical ambassador for all of you in many languages and also in English. Uh, we could think about how we could make a Russian um, application and get it in Russian and build a Russian language maybe next or over next year. This is an online program and um, we will also have some face-to-face -face seminars in different countries. We will have webinars, learning videos, animation videos, information material brochures, chemical knowledge, communication methods, organization of household checks will be the topic. We have tested this program for a few years now in Germany, and it's ready to go out, to swarm out. Uh, we call chemical ambassadors swarm out to Europe. The abbreviation is the CHEMBEES. So a lot of little bees swarming out, flying in Europe and doing very, very, very eagerly the work to make uh, Europe tox free. Why should you join? To detoxify your own household and pass on the knowledge to other households, to make our chemical households checks a really, really used tool all over the world in any country around the Baltic Sea, in all Europe, anywhere. This is um, really important and I hope you really will have uh, the wish to, to contribute and I'm sure Coalition Clean Baltic will keep you informed uh, how this is going on. And this is actually the end of my presentation. I do have the contacts. You can uh, contact us, you can see at our website. We do have a very nice social media account and we do have an email address. It's uh, chemicals team at bef-de.org, uh, where you can contact us if you need more material and information. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope I could give you some ideas, some hints uh, to detox your home, and I hope you will use them. Thank you very much.